Good day to you. Joshua here. Um, before I, I go on with my devotional, there's some things you need to know about me right now in this specific moment. Number one, I'm at my in-law's house. Number two, it is Friday, right after Thanksgiving. This is a pre-recorded message. Um, it's Friday, and it is two minutes after midnight, so it's pretty late. And also, I'm wearing sweatpants. Um, you know, TV announcers do it. People that, that work the news do it, so I thought I would, I would do it too. Uh, it's the day after Thanksgiving, so I think you know why I'm wearing sweatpants. I've been doing some thinking today. And I think I've come to the conclusion that Thanksgiving, if it's not my favorite holiday, it is for sure one of my most favorite holidays. Um, because you have a mixture of, of football, and I know some some guys that might have w gotten up and went deer hunting this morning. Um, I think of how I get to see my physical family. And then you have the food. So... I think Thanksgiving is one of my my most favorite holidays. And I've been thinking about the history of Thanksgiving. Uh, the origins come, if you don't know, uh, from the people that got off of the Mayflower on Plymouth Rock in 1620. They got off in the fall of 1620. That winter was a, was a very hard winter for them. Only half of the people survived it, survived till spring. And then spring rolls around, the spring of 1621, and a man named Squanto. Now Squanto, uh, my whole life I thought he was an Indian that, that approached um, the colonists and, a, you, know, you know, stuck out his hand to help them, but actually, Squanto had been captured earlier and then shipped back to London where he learned English. And then he came back with the colonists. And then this spring of 1621, he shows them how to grow corn and how to grow crops. And they have a really good summer and a really good harvest in the fall. And not only does he show them how to, how to plant crops and to, to work gardens, he helps them form alliances with the, the Indian groups in the area. So that fall, when they had their harvest, the Indians and the Pilgrims came together for what we call the first Thanksgiving. They wouldn't have called it that, but that's, that's where it starts for us. And it happened every year since then in some form or fashion. Uh, and up until 1789, when George Washington made a Thanksgiving pro proclamation. And then it kept on happening as a tradition. And then in 1862... Abraham Lincoln established Thanksgiving to happen the fourth Thursday of every November. And that solidified it as a national holiday. Now, that was how it was up until 1939 when FDR tried to move it up a week, and that didn't go well for him, so he moved it back. And ever since then, Thanksgiving has been on the fourth Thursday of November since then. And it's a holiday that we all know and that most of us, if not all of us, cherish. And in reality, probably my most favorite thing about Thanksgiving is the fact that I get to be with my physical family. Um, this year, my, my father was exposed to COVID, so we couldn't go. We couldn't go to North Mississippi. But... Uh, there's a blessing in that we got to come to South Mississippi and stay a longer time. We don't get to come down here much. So there was a blessing, a blessing in that. You know, I, I miss Thanksgiving with, with my parents and with my sister and my side of the family. And I looked up some statistics. And what I found was this Thanksgiving, around 50%, so half of all Americans will not see their extended family this year. So 
whoever they live with, whether it's their self or their spouse or their spouse and kids or just their kids, whoever they see every day, that's who they did Thanksgiving with. And that made me a little sad. But actually, something that makes me more sad is that pre-COVID, so every year before this year, around... Um, Um, 25 to 30 percent of all Americans pre-COVID spent Thanksgiving by themselves, whether they're alone or with their spouse or just with their immediate family. Around one fourth of all Americans do not see anyone new for Thanksgiving. They don't spend time with extended family or with someone else. They spend it by themselves. Keep that thought and go with me to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at verses 12 all the way down to 24. Luke chapter 14 verses 12 through 24. He said also to the man who, invited, who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of heaven. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything now is ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The verse said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Listen to this. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to his servant, Go out to the, hi to the highways and to the hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who are invited shall taste my banquet. Here, Jesus talks in a parable. He talks about banquets and feasts, and specifically, a man gives a feast and he sends out invitations to uh, maybe his family members or, or the rich or the popular, but they make excuses and they don't come. So instead of having this big feast by himself, he he goes out and gets the lame and the poor, the crippled and the blind. He goes out to the highways and the hedges to find these people. And the point of this parable is that everyone, everyone is invited to Jesus' feast. They have a chair at the table and they are able to partake in the feast and to experience the table. Now, in all of my years of living through Thanksgiving with my family and with extended family, I cannot think of a time where we invited someone else to our table, someone other than family. 
we've been very exclusive in our invitations, just in the fact that we haven't invited anyone else. And I know Thanksgiving is, is meant for family, and I understand that it has that preface, but I'm afraid with myself, it goes, it goes beyond Thanksgiving. It goes beyond this one feast, this one banquet that we have every year. I'm afraid that, that it goes into my everyday life and that I invite the people that I know. I invite you people um, at Leoma to my table and I love sharing my table uh, with you in life and that, and that you have a, a seat at my table whenever you want to. But I'm afraid sometimes I can be exclusive. Not that I'm turning anyone away from my table, but I'm not going out to the highways and to the hedges, and I'm not looking for the poor, or the crippled, or the blame, blind, or the lame. I'm not going out and I'm not searching for those people to invite, to partake in in my life and, and therefore partake in Jesus' life and to partake in his table that is set before us. So I have two questions for us. Number one, this past Thanksgiving, or even Thanksgivings in the past, have you ever invited anyone to your table? Not that you've turned anyone away, but have you specifically invited someone other than your close circle? And number two, are we, as God's people, going through life and sharing the feast of Jesus just with those that know him? Are we inviting other people to Jesus' table? I think it's interesting that that Jesus invited the world to come and to dine with him. But he made us the messengers. Uh, he is the one that gave us the message and said, Hey, go out to the highways. Go out to the hedges. Go see the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame and invite them to my table. That way they can know me and they can experience it. All of the good things that come with him. Are we sharing a spot at the table with other people? Now, you might say, um, I want to make sure that I take care of myself first and my family. And that's, that's true. But my challenge for you this week is, is to think about that, that thought process and keep on reading. Luke 14 verses 25 all the way to the end of the chapter. I think it's just nine verses. Read Luke 14, 25 through 35. Ten, ten verses. And think about your life as I thought about my life and ask, and ask yourself, am I inviting people to my table? Am I inviting people to Jesus' table? I love you. And I'm thankful that, that you have shared your table with me and that you have brought Morgan and I to Leoma and, and shared life with us and loved on us and taken care of us um, as we've been in our first year of marriage and graduating school and being away from our families, I think of how we are very thankful for you and how that you have brought us closer to Jesus' table and that you've made us a little more comfortable in our chair. If there's anything you need, please let me know. Uh, let, let Rodney know or Marie or the elders um, we want to love you, and we want to love on you in every single way that we can. 
So I hope, I hope that you have a great day.